Hi, Lila. Hi, Stassi. Welcome back to, to the, the Lila Ability Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Today, we're gonna unleash the beast. Unleash our beast. Yeah. I think it's time, and it's genuinely been so long. I know we say that every time, but... Yeah. Life throws me so many curveballs at us, so many wiffle balls, so many blue balls. All the <laughs> balls have been in our face the last couple of weeks, so we <sighs> want to sit here and go tit for tat, balls by balls, and yes. let you guys in on our... Our personal our lives, life. all the drama, the accusations, the rumors, and the nastiness. I think Mr. Nice Guy <laughs> is gone no, right now. Nice I only, Guy's only a place in... that we like getting the Cacio Pepe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, if we're not fucking in the photo booth, I don't want to. There's be no here. point. There's no point. But I think, honestly, to start this episode personally, I have a lot on my mind, a yeah. lot on my brain, and a lot in my pussy to unleash so i'm personally gonna need a shot yeah. so you know of course i had to pour up stoss one to match but her outfit yeah, my pony is snatched and i have no will to live <laughs> <laughs> well it. if you guys are at home no matter what day what time get a fucking water get a juice box get a damn shot and sit your ass down because and no this is gonna be sickening sickening <laughs> and these bitches are gonna be Sick. Sick. So cheers, as always, to good health, wealth, friendship, yeah. and liability. But Forever also, cheers to you guys. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, you guys. Love you, dolls, dudes, and divas. Bottoms up, bitches. Ooh. Oh, wow. We Maybe that. I stopped drinking tequila, but I told Lila, I said, let's bring back tequila stars. We have been only vodka the last couple months. Vodka's so like an adult drink, I feel like. I just want to start this because I feel like for months and months and months and months and months and months and months of my life, for once, I've bit my tongue. And I'm not going to sit here and be a dramatic ass bitch, but I feel like there comes a point where, yeah, this is like the tipping scale. I think that every single person in both of our lives has, I mean, the internet's a very small place. We see things like I see everything, but I think, you know, on this podcast, we're not one to sit down and, you know, address the hate, the negativity, the bullying, whatever. But I think when it comes from people that you truly do love and respect, honestly, yeah. and have some sort of past with, there comes a point where, why is this podcast worse? So I feel like we need to start. I don't like that, <laughs> like, persona at all. And I also... No. Do not like I've, I've been used to it for however long I've been on the internet. People coming at me for things that they genuinely do not know anything about. No prior knowledge of. And <sighs> honestly, I called Lila this morning. And what really fucked me up out of everything, every single lie, allegation, nasty hate comment perpetuated by people with other podcasts was Lila being a shitty friend. And I feel like this has been a topic of discussion for quite some time i'm not kidding probably like two years yeah. which is so fucked up okay and obviously what i have it? my moments i think everyone in life has brat bell diva ass moments where yeah. oh my god i could have been a better friend but personally i can't even think of a fucking lot of those because to every friend in my life my friends are family i will treat them like family i'll make sure they're okay whatever 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 but everyone watching, every fucking fan, Stan, Mary fucking Joe, and every coworker I used to have at McDonald's is tagging me in all this bullshit yeah. of the canceled podcast, talking about me, talking about Stoss, talking about a podcast that we love so much. Put so much love and effort to make such a positive space for everybody to be a part of, including, you know, Tana and Brooke, which I felt like that was a very positive, beautiful episode that displayed the eight years of you guys' friendships, yeah. our relationships, and obviously it came to a point where, you know, they talked about the episode being out. And, and it being out 10 months later, first of all, bitch, movies take years. Rome for was not built in the day, <laughs> Bell Diva, honey. And neither was the fucking Taj Mahal. Like, the hottest, most beautiful, amazing things in life, right. just like episodes one through now of Liability are the Taj Mahal bitch. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say to everybody that I'm not going to sit here and try and defend myself because I know who I am. I know my heart. I know my morals. But Tana and Brooke wanted to invest into our podcast. So that is why that is so shocking to me because I've worked so hard on myself the last few months to handle things offline yeah. separately. People are texting me. Then people ghost me for six months. Then our best friend passes away. Suddenly everyone wants to 
send their condolences and I'm like, but you want to be nice and then sit on your podcast. That's just what I don't like. Why can't you go with your word? And were you not just texting me last week saying you wanted to talk in person? So I'm just like, I think the whole thing, why talk about me on a podcast with millions of views? That's just, why are we doubling down on things that have been said and done? Okay. If it came to a point, I mean, I know you guys' relationship is very distance and that's fine. Whatever. But when it came to a point where, okay, you guys are going separate ways, then why is the separate way still online? Like, I don't understand why that has to be like the only way to like address you, your friendship, your eight years of whatever. And I trust me, I I don't know shit. I was not there for eight years of it. I was there for probably two of it. I still love and respect everybody. But I think when it comes to like your dreams, your projects, like, why don't you get the same respect? And I almost feel like it's like the second I like everyone for years is like start a podcast, start a podcast, start a podcast. But I was not doing it. I would randomly go on other people's podcasts. But now that I'm finally doing something for myself and my best friend, why sit on a podcast and bash it? I'm actually doing something with my 26 year old ass self. So I just I don't like seeing that. I don't like people call me a shitty friend because it's like in the end with everybody. I always try and communicate. I'm always trying to be honest we've never sat here and even in the entire episode have ever sat here and like we've been so supportive towards everybody else and their dreams and their hopes and everything that they've wanted to accomplish we've always been there every step of the way regardless if we were friends with them or Or not not. so i think when it came down to it it, there was one opportunity it's if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all and it's really it honestly breaks my heart like it breaks my heart it makes me really sad because i don't think that I'm going to say, I don't think that was right. I don't think that was right to sit there and like pretend like, you know, what we're doing isn't anything. Laugh at our ideas, yeah. laugh at our podcast that everyone said was a good idea. And it, it is sad because I think friendship breakups are harder than literally like most things but that in life. Mean you wish somebody like, but Ill, I would Ill never, intent. I would never be like, fuck, I hope anyone's podcast flops. Like seeing certain people that I used to be friends with get yeah. insane brand deals, go on insane trips, do this. That in my heart yeah. makes me so happy, yeah. even though there is so much negativity being talked about on fucking Reddit. And no, I don't look at it like that itself amazes me because everyone's that's like the speculation. Speculation is so different from like actually word of mouth. And I think word of mouth, it's like, OK, if you're going to say something, then I'm going to take that literal. And I think there's a big difference between I don't like the fact that it's bits of the week is becoming a way to make fun of somebody or and bully somebody like publicly for millions and millions of people like podcast. some people can't take that mentally so it's yeah. like thank god i can bitch i could take a fucking bulldozer in between my legs yeah. i can take a, some fucking bullying but my new thing is with reddit with people on fucking tiktok people in the fucking whatever sphere i am not reading listening or gonna take offense to anything said by someone I would never take advice from yeah at all and bitch Mary Jo and everyone typing away thinking yeah they know anything about me (laughs) (laughs) yeah so I and also LA is so crazy because certain friends people whatever 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 will love to sit in a room and be like oh I fucking hate blah 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 blah. I hate this about her she looks like shit whatever and then the second you actually speak up and communicate with whoever like oh you're kind of annoying embarrassing whatever I have a problem with you you are the biggest devil alive and I'm just like we're 26 y'all people don't want to have conversations weird everybody's entitled to their own opinions to their own truth and to their own narratives but i personally think that perpetuating a narrative that she's not a good friend saying to me at events and things like that that i'm not a good friend to you because of your eating disorder and things like that that hurt my feelings really fucking bad i think that also is another thing whether you guys are struggling with friends throwing things in people's faces whether you're struggling with an eating disorder struggling with addiction struggling with anything struggling with life yeah anyone throwing that in your face or your best friend's face who is there for you does not care about you and does not love you like i've had multiple people go up to sauce and be like you're a shitty fucking friend lila's too fucking skinny yeah. really because are you there when sauce is asking me how i feel after i eat after a meal are you there when sauce is cooking me a meal are yeah. you there when i'm crying because i just ate a meal no no one gives a fuck until it's all business it's yeah. all business it's all views. It's all hearsay, whatever. But when it but the really same people came- saying that are the ones with addictive personalities getting on fucking Ozempic. So it's like when I'm sitting here just genuinely trying to stay alive every single day, 
Why am why is Stas a bad friend? Why am yeah. I a bad person for going to going to therapy, trying to eat, going to berries? Me and Stas started going to fucking berries. It's, it's crazy. Shout out Kyle, you're fucking sex man. Happy <laughs> That's the only crack I want is Barry's boot camp at ten fifty AM. <laughs> I think it's unfair to put that on me as someone who I've never dealt with that struggle. Stas doesn't know anything about fucking like eating disorders the only thing she can do is be there for me yeah so to sit here and then say that i'm a shitty friend to sit here and say that she's a shitty friend is it's just it's it's unfair and it's fucked up and honestly i think there comes a point where you know we have held so much back so much fucking back but i don't even like fighting fire with fire like it's just so it's, stupid it's stupid what am it's i gonna stupid. do rub my flaps together and start another fire yeah like. we gotta make kinetic energy babe. <laughs> like we're good but at the end of the day just don't don't me. say things with no prior knowledge of what the fuck is actually going on and at the end of the day as for those girls i i truly have the biggest love the in my heart for both of them i true I, I i actually do like, like it and, just makes and me I'm sad because they'll like, like say they love Love me so much. Happy birthday. Yeah. We're at an event. Hi. Good to see you. Love you. Congrats on your podcast. But then it's like, you're going on your podcast again to talk about how stupid and laughable liability is. Just it's give like, us a break. Just give us a break, please. That's not the, I'm, I'm actually begging. I'm, Just please. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> leave leave Hannah alone. <laughs> no, you know, it's like, I, listen, I will always support everybody from afar, from a distance. I truly believe like everybody has their own right to say whatever they want, but as for everything that's going on with her and going on with me, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. You know what? What's her name? Will Smith. Said. Will Smith. Um, and I also think it's crazy because I think so fans, followers, thing. people who support anybody. People see it. That, that's amazing. And it may, yeah. it, I, I wouldn't be on this couch if it wasn't for one person ever supporting me. Mm -hmm. But everyone is coming to assumptions with certain i when someone gets canceled because someone gets unfollowed yeah i think i think you were saying this morning a follow button a follow button is is literally a tap of your finger that has barely any emotion or nothing to do with your heart it. it's a finger it's a finger so how are you going to expect someone's heart and emotion to be a part of that that actually is it's the be biggest, a part of a finger it's the biggest misconception <laughs> there's there's no i love you bone Babe, mm -mm. there's no put that finger up my butthole, baby, because that means nothing. Exactly, it, it probably means... feels better there. <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest with you. Exactly, and that's honestly all I'm gonna say because I do want to move forward with this podcast. But I just feel yeah. like there comes a point where I'm not gonna make a story, I'm not gonna make a TikTok, because no. then everyone's gonna say I'm just talking about it for views. I don't give a fuck about the views. I care about honestly people knowing my heart and my intentions. And unfortunately, I feel like the only person that fucking does is Stas. Yeah. And if that, I've realized so much harder lately. I'm so much better off alone yeah. or with m very few people. And you guys know me. I love surrounding myself with like 500 yeah. people. But then I, then I, posse. yeah, I love a, a posse. But then if I'm with you, I want to trust you fully. And if you're just like a going out friend or whatever friend, the, the truth is I shouldn't be telling you my life secrets. Probably not. No, you know, but so I'm we, trying to work on that. We're learning. We're growing. We're moving on as adults and humans. And everything that has happened in the past is in the past. And right in the now, past for a reason. It's all love. And I personally would like to keep it there. Agreed. Me and Stas, like yeah. a little over a month ago, our best friend Kristen passed away. So May 24th of 2024. What was it? May. May, <laughs> May, May 24th. This is why I don't drink tequila. May 24th, um, my best friend passed away, which was very difficult for me. I just feel like it was very sudden. It was very tragic. It was not, it, it was like living in a nightmare. It's so crazy because still is truthfully, you're the only living proof of the situation. It, it was like any other day we were at the pool. We were chilling, soaking in the hot tub. I got a really horrible phone call of my best friend just saying that. You know, my other best friend, my sister, my heart passed away. And it was, it was like mortifying. It seemed like a like, no, they're kidding. Like, it was so pretty li little liars. Caught it, I'm not gonna lie. it was, it, I just remember my heart dropping. Stoss disappeared for like 30 minutes on the phone. Yeah. And I just like felt it in my soul. Obviously the next day we literally don't even think, breathe anything. We pack our shit like we fucking do best. We packed for three days to go to New Jersey. We were there for 12. I had to be with my family, my loved ones, my friends, every single person that's ever meant anything to me. That's where I was going. I was following my heart and following Kristen. And honestly, like, I do want to say, like, if anybody has ever met Kristen, she was the most 
like full of life full smiley of life, beautiful beautiful amazing human i've ever met I, that's still my sister that's my big sister to this day and i've never honestly been, been through death in, in my life which is actually crazy because i'm a very like they call it like a avoidance attachment is where like i don't really deal with my emotions i'm very much like go 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 i think i said this on one episode like obviously like bad timing but like stas's whole family could like disappear and like literally like and she would just not tell me for like a whole week that she hasn't seen her family like and you know what that's like my own personal issues of that's her i'm not really the best communicator with my feelings and through this whole process i've had to grieve we had to go there we had to be with everybody we had to talk about it we had to see a casket it would it would it's so horrific the way everything went down i just you know it's just it was and i always so want to like say like for whoever is watching this like i hope you guys know if you've ever actually experienced losing a friend family anything no one gives you a rule book no one gives you a guidebook on how to be there for each other no one gives you a rule book on like how to feel like un and unfortunately or fortunately i guess with the only somewhat positive out of the situation i think like She'll always, always, always be there. Like, she'll always be, like, right next to both of us. I can't cry. My make I just did my Yeah, your makeup looks too good. But we went to the East Coast, and we had to stay in fucking small, shitty fucking Philadelphia. Lila does not like Philly. I honestly don't like Philly either. You actually saw my first strip club I ever worked at. I saw her first strip club. Which is crazy. I and I think the there was, like, some, long. like, there was some beautiful parts of it. Like, yeah. I got to see both of her sisters. I love she seeing her with her school. family. I love seeing their hometown, but yeah. it was just so unexpected. And I li like literally, I'm not life. kidding. It changed everything about my life. I don't care if there was a anything with my family presidential election rent is due. Don't care. I just knew that my heart had to literally yeah. see be in the East Coast, mourn, figure out how to mourn, which uh, unfortunately I, we still don't know how. I don't think I would have honestly gotten through that time without you. It was like so shitty. I felt like the worst I've ever felt in my entire life. I felt things that I've never felt in my entire life. And I'm just honestly have to say thank you for coming because Duh. it just meant a lot to we me. We packed for three days, you guys. Yeah. And like we were there for 12. So imagine what we were wearing on no day 12. Clothes. We had to get a spray tan in my sister's face and it was horrible. <laughs> and let's just say we had to go to Zara. Yeah. And on top of that, my fucking best friend and sister was gone. So it was just it was, it was so shitty but it was, it was a lot a learning lesson it was a wake-up call it was so many things if you honestly it's another one of those things though that just makes me so much more blessed yeah to realize at the end of the day even if i'm going insane even if i'm so fucking sad we about what's going on life. we have each other yeah and that was the only thing getting me through every second of being on the east coast after all of that yeah. was done if you guys have ever had to attend a burial i'm not gonna lie i thought a burial was only in pretty little liars i've i didn't think people been. actually had to do that it was the, the most heart turning stomach dropping thing i've ever actually seen or participated in and i, I zero out of ten recommend like ugh. it was actually i ugh. feel like we did everything right we went there we exactly with everybody. we did I spoke at the I wouldn't funeral. have changed a thing. So I spoke. It was really beautiful. I remember that Her ass day, crack was out, though. Yeah, my ass crack fully was out <laughs> at Chris's funeral. Love she wouldn't know. have wanted anything, anything else. Um, anything else. But I feel like I did everything right. And I remember standing up there and I was... I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I blacked out. I literally blacked out because you're looking at your best friend in a coffin or a casket. And you just want to open it and, like, grab her and be like, girl, let's go. Yeah, let's go to the club. Like, what's, what's good, let's sis? Go. But, you know, I literally remember blacking out in that moment. I was I was so filled up with adrenaline and nerves and, like, anxious. And the, She still doesn't know what she said. I honestly don't remember what I said at all. I just remember at, towards the end of what I was saying, I looked at Lila and I just saw her crying. I was like... <sighs> it, was, it was the most, like, honestly, like, like, I can't even explain the feeling of your best friend having to walk up and speak on your other best friend in a casket next to her. And like, honestly, I can be in pain, but like, I, I think what's worse than that is like seeing you in pain. And that's what really, it was like seeing me, me in pain over a pain that we were both going through. I love you. I'm going to get a tissue. You guys, this is Kristen up, but... would not want us crying. Yeah. She would want us so smiling funny. forever because even if it was literally six yeah. in the morning and we're at in the Starbucks drive thru yeah. or miserable about missing a flight, she was always laughing we about can something. We make light of the situation. So I think we always have to make light of life because that's what she would want to do. 
she was the light of our life one of the most beautiful people i've ever met and exactly. i honestly think that like remembering her makes me so happy and honestly like i feel like we should like maybe share like our favorite memories of chris just because she was my fucking girl i was my best friend since i was literally 10 years old like you don't get a friend like that and that's what i'm saying like good friends don't grow on trees when you have these friendships always nurture them and check in on your best friends because at the end of the day you never know what can happen and life moves so fucking fast within five minutes something can change and the good people in your life hold on to them even if you distance yourself from people still know that you have love for them because you genuinely 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 i i would personally never want what we've experienced over the last month or death I wouldn't wish and, that on, on, any, anybody. on anybody it was at all miserable. at all and was... she I think she's the definition of quality over quantity because yeah. she could have been the only person in life and I would have literally been just like laughing for the next 90 years yeah. and had, I still will just think about all of our she memories had her fat Chanel bag her beautiful blonde hair her smile <laughs> like Chris one thing about her Chris. was she'd be at the club full Chanel bag <laughs> open cash library cards lip glosses flying sage. she's saging at the club she would bring sage to swan in yeah. miami she was one of my, i miss her very much and yes. honestly like russ russ and Russ-y-Z. peace Kristen, and yeah you know, we love you that was definitely a crazy time but i'm glad that we can move past that and you know the grieving process is definitely something i'm still struggling with now honestly I don't know. My mom like, was saying that. She's like, I feel like you and Sasha talk to somebody, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but no one gives you a rule book. Like no. maybe, maybe in a month I'll feel different. Maybe in 10 years I'll feel different. But I, yeah. someone was telling me this morning that they were like, with death, like you have to realize like how grateful you were to have to every memory with that person yeah. and know that they will literally be, obviously you can't call her, but she, you can talk to her and you can always be there with her for the yeah. rest of your life. Yeah. That's just that. And I love you. Or take a second with granite with this you. episode has been the heaviest episode this I've episode like, has so. been a long 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 month but but after all that we went to new york yeah we gassed it to the city filmed a no. pasta commercial three hour suburban to new well, york say, city one thing we love a road trip we love a road trip <laughs> through the middle of nowhere as you guys know when we were in like um rosemont illinois with olivia kaiser like in august we ubered four hours to indianapolis and we just love a long Uber. So we went to New York. I figured after 12 days in the East Coast, it was time to, you know, switch up this. Have a couple days of just like, okay, we're already on the East Coast. Let's go see a couple of our good friends here. Let's have a good time. Let's be in different scenery before we have to go back and face the real world in LA. Yeah. So we went to fucking New York. New York City is a place that we thrive. I have to say. We were thriving, but Stoss did my ponytail that morning. And the entire oh, ride ponytail to... Ponytail gate is Ponytail crazy. gate is real. Honestly, we passed me the pen. My ponytail she, was so bad. I'm not kidding. Did my ponytail so tight to the point where there was literal holes in my brain. It was full-blown lobotomy season. And by the end of this road trip, me and Stoss, it's very rare that I don't talk. And if I'm not talking something is very well, wrong i said do you want to look cut or do you want to be comfortable and she said i, I didn't look speak cut. almost the, the entire <laughs> ride i had my airpods on and i literally was like oh my god i'm i think i'm gonna die <laughs> and then we get to the hotel my i start getting chills i like my vision gets blurry and i'm like wait stas i'm not kidding i think if this ponytail stays in for five more minutes like i'm gonna probably have to go to the, the she couldn't take the heat go to cedar sinai new york city no so she took it out. We we redid my hair. It was almost instant. Like she actually had her brain cells back together. I was shook. <laughs> and I told her, I said, "Bitch, I would have just redone it for you." But she didn't. She didn't want that. When she I get wanted- the option to look cunt or look like not as cunt, I mean, baby, you know what answer I'm going with. It's either serve cunt or die. <laughs> we went to Noah's bar. Noah, the ginger guy oh, who I have a crush on, who was on the reality show. If you guys don't know at this point, like you've heard this story. Wait, wait, wait. That night wasn't it because if anybody watches Lila's vlogs, that I got the most honestly. She I was drunker say, than me, which doesn't uh, happen. It's never happened in the history of our whole entire friendship. My grieving process has been very much. Your grieving process has been a little extra drinking. Liquored up. Yeah. And honestly, just describe me when I'm drunk because I am not like normally me reserved, chill. So I'm honestly, anything but that. Yes, so I, I feel like usually like you're like diva. cute, kind, like Bell classy, demon. very much just like kind of like normal. That's my Bell But then demon. when she has a couple extra um, lychee martinis double, she 
is see, not only seeing double, but she will like literally see a like security at a random bar that we're not going to. And she'll be like, baby, what's your name? And she'll be, he'll be like, why are you coming in? And she'll be like, no, but like your Instagram. And I'm like, why are you talking like Elmo? I just Let's go. I'm <laughs> on. So we're like talking to fucking Mary Jo, Mary Beth on the street. And then we find, not kidding, two old ladies. They're like 75. They're, they're Chanel bags. I don't remember this. We okay. get into the bar. I was so hot to the point where the Noah, the Ooh. owner of the bar, had to take me into the freezer. Oh, my God. The ponytail gave me, like, fibromyalgia. Like She was, like, having, like, hives at one point, and I felt so bad for her. And I was sitting there, like, pouring Sprinter on her ears because God knows that shit. <laughs> Shout out, work. Kylie. Oh, my God. It was terrifying. And I, I don't get hot. I don't sweat. I don't do any of that. I was sitting right next to her. And I was like, Lila, like, get the fuck away from me. Like, you're burning me up. Like, Joe Jonas. Bitch. I was burning. Like, Joe Jonas. Like, Joe Jonas. Like. Get the fuck away from me, bitch. I, I was burning her up like her fucking curling iron on her leg last week. Yeah, but no, I'm not kidding. Nasty. We went into the fridge. And I was like, do you guys want, like, the cook to, like, cook you food? Of course, the only thing we wanted was carrots and celery. Carrots, celery, and ranch. If they had it on Crustable, it I would have ordered that. It was the best ranch ever. Oh, my God. You guys have to go to his fucking bar in New York because I'm not kidding. It's one of one. There's no <laughs> place like it. And then Stas, it was, like, 11 p.m. I was already planning my escape, which is crazy because if y'all know anything about me, you know I'm usually planning my escape at 11 a.m. the next night. Yeah. But Stas, it was 11 p.m. She's like, another shot. Let's let's mix the vodka and the tequila and shots. And I'm like, I did. You want to mix? <laughs> okay, Miss Seamoss, I'll get you a shot. I Noah wish I brings put over. I Seamoss in my shots. I think you could. Like maybe with like I'll rum or something fun, blend it up. Wait, that would be insane. Noah walks over with a platter of 14. And mind you, I'm a little skinny bitch. Like, I can really take, We're 5'11 like, and small, babe. I can take, like, I, I want to say my alcohol tolerance is probably, alcohol. like... Alcohol. Uh, alcohol <laughs> tolerance. See, I'm drunk right now, and I've just took one shot. I'm taking another. It's probably... Let's take one. It's probably, like, two or three, but honestly, like, Noah, I fucking love you. You deserve the world. An amazing bar owner, host, sexy body. Yeah. Love the hair. He's a hottie. Like, I think at the end of the day, like, my username on Instagram is who is Lila Get Me, and his is who is an agent orange. orange. So, who is Lila Orange, bitch? Oh. Let's get <laughs> No, but. I want to, I want you guys to, like. Be in cahoots. Like, me too. He's like so make cute. like a collab. Like who it's is fine. I have a crush. Or... I do have a crush. I feel like you guys would be a good p pair because he's the boy version of you, and nobody goes as hard as him and you. And you guys together is like a fucking powerhouse. It is. It's really hot. Like you guys will run any <laughs> bitch over, and it's crazy. Me and Stotz keep going on these like solo vacations where each one is better. Like okay, we started in Rosemont, Illinois, then we that ended up fun. in Indianapolis, then Texas a couple months ago. Yeah. Then Cabo last month, but then a couple weeks ago, 90%. just us in New York. Insane. New it was York the best trip ever. And we met so many of the liability bad We met a lot of people. Was there. And I have to say, like, if you guys ever see us slurring drunk out, like heels falling off, please say hi. Like, but that nothing makes, makes me day. happier at this. Like, okay, I'll randomly meet someone out, but meeting someone with my best friend who literally follows my best friend who watched our podcast that we put so much energy into is, I think, better than any orgasm I've ever had, any case I've ever had, and it's better than any feeling in the entire world. So Retweet. genuinely, 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 thank you guys for always even watching five minutes of liability, yes. caring about liability, or caring about me and our stars. I like, love you guys all it's, so it's much. It's so beautiful, you seriously. Awesome. And New York also takes the cake because... Me and Stoss love a lot of things. We love a jet. We love, love an Uncrustable with Ranch. Love a lychee martini. All right, you guys. And without further ado, me and Stoss definitely just want to give a big shout out to our lifesavers over at Bathme. Bathme is the world's biggest selling penis pump for a reason. With over 1 million satisfied men, Bathme harnesses the power of water through a hydraulic vacuum acting as a secondary pump to your heart. One thing about me and Stoss <laughs> is we can turn water into wine. But one thing about that water is it better be going in this Bathme 
Checkmate Penis Pump. Not only does it, it literally feel like you're going to the gym. Your man does not need to go to the gym. He just needs the bath paint penis pump. It gives so much intense increasity in their orgasm. And I'm not going to lie. If he does not use this Bathmate penis pump before walking to my front door. Bye. Why do you think you're getting close to my $50,000 vagina? So the man using the Bathmate will always feel the actual benefits two weeks after regular use. So baby, you have to be consistent. Bathmate offers a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee experience of all benefits of Bathmate and affording the comfort of knowing that if this user is not satisfied, they'll receive a full refund and a full erection. This hydro pump is FDA regulated. Unlike my illegal ass injections, this is actually approved for Somebody that I know literally bought it texted me and said it was the best purchase he's bought in a decade. And Lord knows he was buying a lot of Chanel bags. And it is confidently known to increase size, girth, and everything else, baby. 82.7% of users reported real results. Thank you, God. And thank you, Bathmate. You guys, thank you so much to Bathmate for sponsoring this video and this podcast. Baby, Lilability has got you for life and got your man covered and big. So keep on watching. But we also love a random excursion. And I didn't even knew, know New York had an island. Oh, Gatano Island. Gatano Island. If y'all have been to New York and haven't been to Gatano Island, Stas, okay. take it away. Okay, so it's this day club called Gatano on Governor's Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lila is not used to this city. I'm from New Jersey. Like, you pretty much do whatever the fuck you want there, and they don't tell. New York has no rules. We get on the ferry to Gatano Island, and we were all freaking out. We were dying. Because I was like, do we need tickets? Do we wait in line? Do Lila we just walk we were on? Like the Mayflower. And I was like, <laughs> Lila, this is the fucking Governor's <laughs> Island ferry. It was. Like, this. And I'm only used to a suburban at night to like Nobu or Tao in, in New York City. I'm not used to getting on a ferry to an island that it's has the a only club. Way to live. And then your barefoot Stoss was in heels. There was gravel. Like that was crazy. <laughs> I was literally dressed like Ivanka Trump sitting up here on an island where everybody was in flip flops and sneakers and whatever. But I have to say, cheers to my New York dolls, dudes, and divas, <laughs> New York in this bitch. And a cheers that we did so much in new york and yeah. literally i think that they started on bad girls club which is crazy because we did the shot with the claremont twins last week yes baddie baddie shot, shot at clock baddie baddie shot at clock down the hatch oh shit sister wow mm. okay i love this podcast <laughs> so that was our new york trip we got to the airport i don't remember when we left for the airport but we left for the airport we, we got, got there. Separated. We get to the airport. And Stas' sister was so amazing. She drove from Philly to New York and then drove Sophia, us to the airport. I Sophia, I love you so much. Shad and I love you so much. Thank you for letting me honestly eat all your food in your fridge. My sisters are the best. Her sisters honestly are so cute. But considering I don't talk to my own. No. And we get to the airport. And I think they said we were two minutes late for the cutoff. It was just. It was diabolical. And a lot of the time, I honestly thought it was transphobic. And a lot of situations me and Stoss get into. It's been a I lot feel recently. Like People have been fucking testing us. They have been testing us. And I feel like Stoss is always very much okay. Smile. Problem solver. There's a there's always a Lila one thing at a time. And then she'll look at me and I... I feel so... When I get quiet is how you know I'm either going to cry, freak the fuck out, or like... I don't know, but I look at her and we do this look where we're, we're just like. <laughs> it's the glare it's and smile. It's like, okay, is there a solution? We go, okay, is there another flight today? She goes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. And at this point, day 12, I'm sorry, day 12, New York and burying my best friend. I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> I have to go. Peace, bitch. I have to. LA is calling. So then we're like, okay, what do, we can, we can do one more night together, yeah. obviously. What's tomorrow looking like? She goes, oh, there's only one seat tomorrow. <laughs> and it was $500. And we were like, it was already a $700 economy one way from Los Angeles to, where do we fly into? Philadelphia, Philly. New Jersey. Yeah. I don't fucking care. But it was already some crazy shit. And then she gave us more crazy shit. Yeah. So after all the bullshit, the we had to do the is... unthinkable. Separate. Ugh. 
it was really hard you guys i'm not <laughs> it sucked so bad too i'm honestly very much unfazed because i think i always low-key expect the worst so when she told us only lila was getting on this damn flight i'm not gonna lie like i just looked at her and i said bitch get on the flight I, I was starting to tear up and I swear to God, Stoss looked at me and she goes, baby, the issues are for the tissues. Yeah, like I, I don't I don't have it in my body to worry about this right now. I'm going to just wait a couple of days and then think about it once I'm home. Because baby, we I saw her the next that. day, though. We yeah. saw Stoss. We was crazy. I saw Stoss the next morning. I flew home. I think I literally went out that night because I figured if I stayed home, I would be way too not even alone with Stoss, but alone with my thoughts. And I'm not going to lie. That's so much work. So Gosh. I was like, okay, I have to go like get in a suburban, get in the vibe. Yeah. I went out. I saw her the next day. We went to Pride. That and then That was beautiful. It was beautiful. Pride in the park in LA. We saw Malia and JoJo. Our best friend Malia is so a backup good. dancer for JoJo Siwa. And she I have to give Malia her flowers. If you guys have ever seen any of my like content with Malia, most hilarious, most talented, most perfect person ever. Yeah. And she slays. And she was JoJo, JoJo Siwa's backup dancer, Justin Bieber's backup dancer, and she's that bitch. So we had to go support our she's gays, so theys, wees, and Malia. Yes, we. <laughs> um, and that was amazing. We went with Paul Mitchell. It was both of our first Pride. It was which, iconic. If you guys live in any town or city. Go to Pride. I think they had a Pride in Haddon Township, New Jersey. They so did. just go to something because if you guys – have been out for 15 years or five minutes. It I, My first Pride in Bettendorf, Iowa, it was their first like little Pride event and it was at a bar. Was, it was the day that I took two extra shots and posted on Instagram that I was transgender. So That's right. I think it's sis. always it's always so welcoming. Like it's always so amazing. I love seeing anyone be themselves. It's the safest space you could be around is like like minded people and your community. And I don't know. I want to Stoss do more was that. literally switching shoes at Gatano Island in New York with a drag queen. So obviously he's a male, but then he like does drag <laughs> and they were. <laughs> Listen, you guys, I wore heels in the fucking sand dunes <laughs> of New York City and I'm not going to lie. My shoes were so tight. I looked at a drag queen. I said, what size are you? <laughs> And they just nodded. He said, baby, I think I'm size 10 or 11. I Let's switch it up. I took my shoes off and I'm wearing Jesus sandals. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, they were Jesus sandals up to here. Like, a hundred size too big for me. And I give him my shoes. And the saddest part is they fit. <laughs> I think we need those sandals again, though, because me and Stoss are going to Cover and Alex's wedding this weekend. And we they said we had to, to wear... um Clogs. Not clogs. Blocks. Crocs? Wait. Vlogs. Yeah. <laughs> we have to wear like sandals. We have to wear some, like flat shoes, which yeah. Stoss is in heels right now, I'm you guys. I'm like... on the pod today because I felt like you guys deserved it. But yeah, oh, yeah I don't it... know about the Jesus sandals and the drag queens. Like, that's just a lot for me at this moment. I'm New just York, stick with New York stilettos. loved. Well, no, we love New York, and I do think still I want to move there at some point. But right when we landed, like I said, we went to Pride, we went to, ended up at a Jean Paul Gaultier event with the fucking Claremont she twins. Got us in JPG. <laughs> Vadi Vadi Shot O'Clock They are the funniest Most sweet Perfect angels On the planet Nan and Nade Shout out to y'all Cause y'all are the Prettiest Baddest bitches Out there I want honestly. them on the podcast No I was Honestly I'm not gonna lie I was freaking out Because I'm a twin And I know my twin Loves those twins And Every time I see them though I It's hard so for me circle. Not to say Okay yeah I get it We've met multiple times But I'm not gonna lie I'm literally Your biggest fan Yeah you're wearing like kaleidoscope glasses like there's like a hundred of them i just love them so much like they're everything i'm not gonna lie i want to be so respectfully work in progress yeah. so we have been very very gratefully busy yeah. since we landed from a, an amazing traumatic trip yeah and i think this week was kind of our first after the trauma it was pride it's been so. a debrief but i think landing yeah. to a bunch of pride stuff was beautiful Pride in LA, Pride in New York. I'm it sure. It made me feel really good. Pride is like New or is like um, Coachella. Yes. Like so many events. Very everybody's much out. Festival, very much celebration of life, which I think that's exactly what we needed at the time. People who have said they hated the dolls are suddenly wearing rainbow fucking leggings, and I'm like, I love a switch up. Love a switch up. Love a transition. <laughs> the other day, you know, I saw. I don't even know if I told you this. I saw Austin McBroom. Get the at out. Barney's. Did you really? Which, for those of you who don't know, I think I've talked about this multiple times. Aust or Barney's is like a dive bar where like people go and black out who are either in between the ages of Barney's is a seven fourteen and fifty five. <laughs> I've seen. 
I think I've seen like an 82 year old who peed on me last year on seeing arrangements there. Like, I'm I not gonna lie. I personally have blacked out there too many times to where the point it's like. I can't go back. I, I honestly can't go back. I've retired. I don't want to feel that again and I don't want to see that again. Yes. But I do have to say, Barney's is lit. <laughs> like, I wish we, I, I'm dying to podcast in Barney's on Wednesday. We do want to podcast in Barney's and we do want to podcast in a suburban. We are yeah. just telling our production that we want to bring all this equipment into a big ass. I think Navigator. Yeah. I think a Lincoln Navigator. Well, why don't it. we go on like a road trip? We should go to like Palm Springs and just bring this stuff. Cause we and do it road in the suburban and do it in Palm Springs. That'd be iconic. And then do it in each other. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Vibe, <laughs> but this is our first week that we've kind of just had a couple little breathers and it's been nice to just the May gray, June bloom. Both of them are over. The Thank God. The sun has been literally is tight. rising. The other day, me and Stas, I don't know what we did this day we ended up at some like nana jacqueline like fashion show which was that was hot. such a, an amazing kind of full circle you moment you guys lila lila's like my like my baby in so many senses of like her even though we have an age age gap okay age gap i'm not your dad like uh, there's no age gap between four years so. no i know i'm kidding it's okay so, Lila's it's, style evolution for me has been one. Of, honestly, even my style evolution has been so hot, so sexy, so classy, so rich, and I just I love seeing her like discover love. New, like she didn't know what accessorizing was. You guys like I didn't on. know what lip liner was a couple years ago. You just have more potential than that. You you can evolve from just wearing a two piece set. You can put a set together yourself. You can add an accessory. You can she add always a says. Belt. X, Y, Z, Baldiva, Baldiva, whatever the fuck. I don't give a shit. You, t you started teaching me with the bows. Always put a bow in your hair. And then Always. recently, I when I'm stressed, you're it. like, what do you say? Start with the pants or start with the top? Start with the shoes. Start with the shoes and then go from there. And start then from the there, shoes. her and my other friend always tell me, nine bracelets, two watches, anklet, a necklace, for like just do the whole nine and me i'm just like get a as nose piercing that day if you feel like it. as long as i have my fenty fucking yeah. gloss and my r light yeah i'm like bitch i'm good she's down for the count <laughs> but yeah that was iconic honestly that was the that was a pinch me moment recently us going to the nana jacqueline event and just kind of vibing and, and then like, we went to this restaurant opening and it was so weird. It's weird. I, I really oh, want to talk to somebody that, place in BH. that can maybe tell us more. But like every time it's just me and Stas, just me and her. Something weird happened. And we're either at a bar, at an event, at a club. And it's always and with an old, old confusing person. Like one time at Barney's, someone came up to me and said, I don't know what you're going through, but you'll be okay. This time someone came up to us and started speaking demonic paranormal activity shit at us. Well, I'm not going to lie. I think. I think he just was on drugs. Well, yeah, I think he was. It was like a out. nice place in Beverly Hills, though. I think Hills, it was though. foreign and cracked out. So I think there was just multiple factors. Maybe there was a language barrier. Yeah. The communication was just shot. But he comes up with. to us and he goes. Yeah, he started. He was barking. like barking at you. He was barking at me, and I'm not gonna lie, like, like Valdiva is like I am so, like I just like I was like hi how are you like <laughs> yeah like what the fuck like if you're barking at me at least let me bark back bitch like what like i don't give a fuck at all like i was like hey how are you and then he was like i know you but one thing about la is somebody will always be like i know you i know i fucking know you and it's like okay from mean? where did you pay me two years ago did you fucking take me to dinner did are you, you ask on me my to... snapchat premium are like... you on my only fans did i like make out with you at the club whatever and I'm just like, <laughs> that goes always with the characters of LA. Explain, There's so many of them. Explain yourself. He was, so this guy's barking at me. I'm not going to lie. I literally had to like clutch on to Lila because I, I was freaking out. And we were supposed to be there for a dinner. Turned out. It was not there was no there. food. There was no fucking That's food. That's where I draw the line is no food. Because one thing about me is. <laughs> and then Stoss left per usual. But yeah. I haven't even told you this. What? I just saw, I was like looking at my notes of what's happened the last couple weeks. At this place called Negroni. Yeah. Stoss left. I was still there. I was kicking with all the rich men. And I this girl said she's like met me before. So I was just like, Oh, you're my best friend. I love you. So I was hanging out with her, doing the whole nine. And I don't know when I glam lately. Like my nose and eyelids, just everything starts running. I think it's my infected lash extensions. Uh. But I look at her and I was like, I really need a tissue. Like I want to blow my nose, but I don't want to fuck up my lip gloss. And she's like, I think she also had a language barrier and she looked at me and she was like, no, 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 just do what I got you. And so I'm like, okay, what do you mean you got me? And she's like, 
I don't think she knew what I was trying to say, but I was like, no, I have to blow my nose. And she like held out her hand. So I literally just went like this because I thought she meant like she got me. And I literally blew the fattest <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> flattest. <laughs> and she literally Gosh. all over is dripping down my lips. She Ew. pulls her hand away. It's dripping down my chin. I'm like, Wait, what's she I thought you wanted? said you got me. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, I thought you said you wanted lip gloss. No. <laughs> And I'm like, then why don't you pull out your fucking Fenty fucking glow bomb, You're bitch? Drooling all over this girl. Had to run to the bathroom, but it's always me like spilling on my white dress, putting snot on the floor. Like, there's always yeah. some food ag- in the nail. Me and Stoss were at Barry's the other day. I farted, and I was like, Stoss, I think I shit myself. Yeah. She was like, No, I think you're good. She did. I just think <gasps> did I? No. A little bit. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable. But I don't. No, care. it would have given me anxiety. I don't care. We just went to Dunkin' Donuts. After. It's better off just getting the Bantam Bagel, which yeah. if you guys have never experienced a Bantam Bagel from Starbucks or Dunkin'. I've been a fan of Dunkin's, but extra crispy if you're about You butter. have to have them put it in the fucking toaster for extra because, bitch, yeah. one thing about us, whether it's a croissant, that dick, whatever, extra toasted, extra hard. And extra. we're going to inhale that. <laughs> And we're taking it whole, baby. And I would, and I did. You already fucking know, but summer has been just flying by. Me and Stas still kind of have plans to do our little European vacation, but obviously when life throws blue balls, wiffle balls, and all this bullshit at you, plans change, and I that's can, okay. I'm only so tough. I can only take so many balls. Like, yes. It's, agreed. It's a lot. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, also, the other day, I went to a... I think I told you this. I went to a comedy show. I've been loving my comedy shows. If you guys need a good laugh, not kidding, go. Um, and Are you this guy- about the comedy store? When yes, we- our favorite place ever. When we, we saw, saw Nikki, Nikki Glaser. Oh my fucking god! So good, but oh my god! I don't know if you were I there. I fucking love that woman more than anything. I love her so much. more than anything. And she's I- so funny. Also, really quick note about comedians. I do want to say this because I think it. My friend was telling me I need to make a whole YouTube video about this, and I damn near just might. Maybe I'll talk about it for 30 minutes right now. Something with hate on, to backtrack 30 minutes, hate on the internet. My job, if anyone were to say I were to have one, is to entertain. Pussy PSA. Pussy Pussy PSA. Pussy Pussy PSA. PSA. I saw Jake the other day. He's so cute. I love a disclaimer. Disclaimer. My job is to entertain. My job is to also dramatize my stories my job is to also tell stories as you guys remember from six years ago when I made my first story time about fucking my high school English teacher but then when I tell those stories obviously instead of saying like yeah I drank some of the Stoss's refresher I'm gonna say yeah I drink and I swear to god it was Lay's and oh my god like just go to town with the story and people love to get offended but go to a comedy show, bitch. Please. They are the most offensive fucking people on the planet. And if you don't like it, Laugh. then why are you here? It's honestly like it's it shows your character and like the That's less your job. The less fucks that you give, the more honestly happy you are. So why not make other people happy while you're doing it, right? And I think maybe tell me if I'm wrong. I think America out of all places in the world are the most um sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like in Australia. If y'all have seen Jemay, I'm not going to repeat any <laughs> jokes that that girl, Chris Lilly, has said. Yes. <laughs> but it's just on public television. And I think that if you're watching something where you know they might be unhinged or saying something funny and you're going to get offended, you are wasting your time, Ma- Mary Beth. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> but Sally. I love a comedy show. Day. And I saw this one like six foot nine white guy, blue eyes, so hot Australian there. So obviously Which I'm like, guy? I want to wrap him up like a tree. Where is he at? I don't know. So I go up and talk to him and he's like, oh, like, I swear I saw you collab with like these porn stars. And I'm like, OK, so are you subscribed or like I'm confused? He's like, no, I'm part of the porn world. Oh. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to like when a, a guy says that, though, like you're fucking so many people. Like, I just want you because you're so perfect and Australian. He tells me that his name online is the girth monster. Wow. I'm like, I suddenly wonder- I'm scared of the monster under <laughs> my bed, baby. <laughs> I wonder if that's his maiden name. <gasps> I don't know, but I'm willing to change that. Right? For sure. <laughs> what, girth Monster Gibney. <laughs> Imagine. I like the sound of that. What I would think- yours be? Um, Bend it over, Beldiva. Bend it over, Beldiva. <laughs> I would. That was a good I one. <laughs> 
But what's been your peak in your pit of your week, Stas? Of my Tell week? Me. Yeah. Honestly, um, I would have to say the White Fox party. Okay. If you guys didn't know, the White Fox party is... I think we talked about... We talked about this with Kayla. Oh, we did. But the White Fox parties are always the best. Oh, this year's recap is insane. If you're a brand and you're trying to throw a party... I'm really sorry to be the White one to Fox say it. White Fox has got you. You won't do it. Com- you won't do it as well as them. White Fox parties, like when, like fucking Georgia, like Cody, like every single Australian baddie there. Owner, manager, everything. They always look amazing. They're always so sweet. Slaying so fucking hard. They make everybody feel so so hot special and special. Hundred like- photographers for each person to enter. It's legendary. It's always literal like Beyonce, Cardi B, Lotto, Tyga, and fucking And there's like an Oppenheimer in the corner like <laughs> cheers. Always the Oppenheimer twins, always Christine Quinn with her 40-inch waved fucking hair by Chris Martin like My favorite thing about LA is when it feels like a high school reunion and that is the high school reunion of Los Angeles is But the it's White almost party. like the not the shitty high school reunion. It's almost like the private school high school reunion Ooh, like it's went. people that i love and friends with look up to yeah. followed my whole life like it's always just everyone i Best want vibes. to see like usually Best when i go out it's like oh fuck yeah so white and box so parties like change my brain chemistry for the year because it's the one night well i would say one night but one night a year sauce goes out yeah the one night i go t- out is the white box party and there's i always you know what's so crazy lila i've always had an interaction with the performer last year it was sweetie diamante it's always at you. the white fox party it's always at the i feel like all like should i get into the rap game you think i could see you rapping but a, a lot of i think like there's been like so many like deandre's got you covered fell deep on the track you you really could be like a, like I kim petras meets like rap meets like cuz i, I don't could. think you can sing but you could really like auto tune is great these days. That's true. AI. That's true. Lotto took her phone. She said, "Put it on the floor." I'm like Stassi Bell. This like, is when I was literally drinking tequila, so I was by the a, cup. Yeah, I was having a tequila sauce night. And one thing I do when I'm drunk is I disappear. Lila's looking for me. Where the fuck is this bitch? I, I'm at the front row looking Lotto straight into the BBL, and she takes my phone and she just shakes it like it's her job. No, no, no. Like straight into her literal ass crack. And it's so annoying. Like I wish me and Stoss could change this, but I think that just might be how life works and our friendship. Whenever we look our best, our matching, we always find each other at the end of the night. Like we walk in together, we take our little photos and videos. And then when she sees someone, it's never a high bye. I'm like, fuck on to the next. So she always gets sucked. For like eight years. She'll see someone she saw three years ago attending FITM in fucking college, and she'll talk to them for three hours. But I'm just like, if I don't move on, I won't get my photo. I won't get a shot. I won't get a caviar potato. And like, you're like doing like the like Tour de France, like around like the White Fox. I'm like so slow with so much shit, but when it comes to being like doing my lap, I'm like on. Well, that's. I mean that you're better at that than I am. One thing about me, and I, I will, I will get comfortable. I will make a new friend group. I will take a shot. I will start something that I've never done before. <laughs> Shit, you do always make a new friend group, and then I always see you, and you're like, Lila, they went to my high school, and I'm like, I mean, how do you know these bitches from Gung Ho, New Jersey? Like, those are my friends, Lila. It's so it's unreal, those but there's always a cast of a show. There's always like the whole cast of fucking perfect match yeah. that all say they're single with all their boyfriends at the party. Too hot to handle boys always doing or trying to do their biggest. Okay. <laughs> it's a little too hot. It's way too much sauce. But yeah, LA LA Pride was like insane. Stoss also met fucking her twin. Doree. Oh my god. From the housewives, right? Well, actually it's so funny because like literally like, shout out like my mom Mora. My mom Mora literally always is like, when are you gonna meet a housewife? When are you gonna uh sit here? And, I want like, Lisa Rinna on this goddamn podcast so Lisa, bad. Oh, I'm gonna ask Delilah, I'm not so kidding. Hot. I want her and her mom on the That'd be iconic. I would love to do both. Coming their soon. Hair, coming right? soon. Collab coming soon, but yeah. So I've always wondered, I, I rarely ever, because I'm mixed, so I rarely right. have a doppelganger. I'm not, like, that white. I'm not that Egyptian. Like, I'm white and Egyptian. Right. So the two people I always get compared to is... Tate McRae. Tate McRae. Honestly, that yes. I can't even claim because she's so fucking beautiful. 
Jareek Hemsley and Chantel Jeffries, actually, which is so crazy. Oh, my God. We fucking met we Chantel. Met oh Ew. God. She's that the hottest fucking bitch ever. I told and her And I'm that. not going to lie. I have to take accountability because someone's going to say it. What? I know I've said in recent podcasts she was very rude. But I take it back. Because honestly, I'm not going to lie, I had never met her until this moment. But I just heard she was rude, but she was really sweet. I told her that I invested in NFTs because of her. Are you lying? I still have the NFT. You did one, right? (laughs) She does so much. I remember one time she posted her bank account and she was like, Getting so much money every fucking day. It actually was insane That's a hot to girl me. Who deserves that. I'm just going to say that right now. But I met her and I met Jareek Kemsley and I have in to In the say, same week. In the same week. And two of my dogs, I'm not going to lie, I don't look like any of them now that I've seen everybody, you know, behind Instagram. We have but- to get more creative though because me and Stas have this, oh, this show called Monk. If you guys know, you know, but he would, he has like really chronic OCD and he would always say, it's a gift and a curse. Me and Stoss have this gift and curse where we watch a reality show. Stoss is it obsessed be- with the show. I never see it. One of us. Every single time. One of us becomes friends with someone on the show or yeah. one of us fucks someone on the show. And it's happened both ways. Twice. Three times. Wait. which Three time? times. Literally with the challenge. Perfect okay, match. Okay, and two hot to handle. <laughs> And there, oh my goodness. Not saying which was which, but whether it's a friend or a hookup, the challenge to out to handle in perfect match, watch out because we're done watching. Yeah, I, I, I ended my Netflix <laughs> subscription because everybody I saw on the TV, I banged. So. Hulu only, baby. Hulu only. <laughs> I'm a Hulu fan Should we on. talk about dating for a sec? Somebody said that we should. We should talk about dating. I mean, I feel like I have to go on a date to go out dating. I also think that, but I think I was thinking dating? about it the other day. That I have been, somebody said, tell me if y'all have had your vaginas done for so long. I've have had mine done for four years almost, which is crazy. And someone said around four to six years of having your vagina done, you get less horny, which is crazy. And I might have to call my fucking surgeon because I'm pissed. I feel like I disagree with that. <laughs> but I'm also You've been 22. the extraest horny I'm, right I'm, now. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm horny. Like, I'll just say that. Like, I feel like being 22 is your year of, like, I'm trying to fuck. I'm not going to lie, you guys. Are you showing your dick There's literal penis pump right here. (laughs) Talk later. Yeah, anyways. We'll we'll talk about what that's being used for next episode. I'm personally, like, But you said you're asexual, which I don't understand because I feel like. Ignore my dirty socks, you guys. Over the past couple years, I've been attracted to no one. This year, I'm attracted to a fucking cotton swap. You're attracted to everybody right now. I've been in that era, but when it comes down to that person being in front of me, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, time to call my car and go order Tom Yum soup. Why did I just talk in a country accent? Wait, I want to talk about dating for a second because obviously me and Stoss have different sex drives. Usually when we were both horny, we figure it out together. You know. Um... (laughs) <laughs> but I think after, you know, having a vagina for five years, being a little part-time sugar baby for a second, but I've since retired and just clocked like in, clocked out. a bunch of other shit. First of all, I've realized that my worth does not come with a Well, honestly, it does come with a paycheck, but it's sex always- and love and dating is so much more than that. And I've always said, oh, to whoever talking to a guy, like, is he giving you a car? Like, but obviously that isn't everything. But I think no, living I mean, in LA, give you this industry, like people think that if it's not, if you're not gaining followers or dollars in your bank account, that your boyfriend's not worth it. I want a civilian. But I, I'm I'll just ready for there. a civilian. I want a civilian dick. And, I don't want no famous ass dick. I want a dick no, that nobody knows about. No, 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 no. Remember the Hollywood fix at the Patrick Daw event? He was like talking to any rappers recently. And I literally was like, no, like I literally <laughs> want somebody randomly vegan someone who loves to read i want him to play the violin like i just want him to like be a little more hi ladies because you never know what can happen but honestly like i do think once you grow and evolve from you know your past trauma with relationships i honestly even like myself like you start to be open to the best and highest quality and idea. And I think that comes with self-respect, if I'm being completely honest. Monet McMichael says, I say this every episode, once you are whole, 
your man needs to be a fucking addition. Not man, woman, whatever they want to be, they need to be an addition, not a subtraction. Not a division, not a freaking and like fraction and a half. An addition and a multi-fucking-plication, baby. Mm-mm. Because you should not be, your man should not bring you back. A friend should not bring you back. Daisy, sit down. Because your dog shouldn't bring you back either. <laughs> the square root of a bad bitch is a sexy, intelligent Is 3.1415 Ooh. pie. Okay. Or by. You want your What were you saying, though? A sexy? A a sexy, intelligent, supportive man behind her. So don't ever settle for less. Exactly. I think I'm just ready to... I'm ready for the support as well. Like, definitely want him to have an infinity pool. But I'm ready to date for purpose. Ooh. I feel like, okay, I could go on a date for a free chicken tender and espresso martini at seven at Delilah. But I want to date for a purpose. I want him to make me... Oh, feel like certain that. things I want him to like I never heard you say that I just like I'm 26 like okay. I see all my you like family that, girl. <laughs> I'm 23 you should just be like I'm, I'm should, I, should I go up or down should yeah. I start saying I'm 30 I think like you look like a 24 year old so. so yeah I just turned 23 today and I'm I would so just excited. be like at that ripe age of 35 well it was still ripe you know, you you know what you deserve. You know, like even like myself at twenty two, like I've never. You know what you deserve. Yeah, I've I've known that since. But I think that me and you yeah. both, and I'm sure you guys can relate. Whether it's a shitty ex, a good ex, a rich daddy, a guy f- like from prison, a guy from out of town that used to like whatever the case may be, we, me and Stoss have experienced every type of male and everything yeah. relationship. And now I'm just ready for something normal. Like, honestly, I w- I'll always be myself. I want to be very Paris Hilton coded where she still goes out at 40. Like, what's your normal, though? Like, I would, ugh, I don't know. Because like, I, I don't normal? think and whenever I'm putting out there to make that happen, because that's just not going to happen. What I'm putting itself. out there is honestly taking one too many shots when that. I'm out and about and slurring. But I think if I meet a guy out, I'm I went through the stage like. Of remember when I would always be like you, Stas. I met this guy at the club last night. He's my soulmate, and no. you would always say, "Girl, someone you meet at the club is not your fucking soulmate." I mean, listen, I I don't know because I truly believe there is love stories like that, but I just think if you're meeting somebody at four in the morning, the only thing like bond between you guys is a tequila Red Bull, then maybe that's just not the one. <laughs> I want him to leave at midnight because he has to, like, get up to, like, serve something Ooh. duty at, like, 5 a.m. and put on a suit while I sleep. You want a man I that serves sleep. jury duty? And then I order Starbucks on his card. Like, I want that type of vibe. That's love. That's I had this love. one guy who, every time he left my house, he would always be like, I know your address and I know your order. Starbucks is on the way. Ugh. And I should have pursued him, but he got in a car accident, Aww. so that's annoying. So God bless him. But our advice to girls who want to level up to like or get, you're leveling down and staying with someone shitty yeah is you, you gotta change your mind you gotta change the way you know the definition of going crazy is doing the same thing and not and expecting a different result yeah. so i think when you become that person that you've always known you can become you're gonna attract someone even better that will bring you to a better level that will make you think about things differently that will level up love you that will support you that will think of things for you like you know what i mean like that's what yeah that's what that's what that is so i keep seeing these videos of yeah don't um, work on the man work on you that's it don't work on the man the woman or the relationship because baby i hate to break it to you that relationship is dead and gone (laughs) work on yourself (laughs) but i you telling people end your relationships well i'm sorry i met this girl last night that she was like it was so funny because me and Stas have spent years That's of our hysterical. life in like Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, Miami. Mm-hmm. And this girl last night was like, oh, I just moved from West Palm, like Del Rey. Like, I loved going to Tremonti's. She literally said that and I nearly screamed. And she was like, but I had dated this guy. He beat the fuck out of me, blah, 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 to the point where I had to move to L.A. just to like move on. And I'm like, it shouldn't. I, that to me is so mind boggling. And I always like, I never yeah. know what to say because I'm like, if a man even like flicked me. I would literally tell my security to call the police. And it just makes me so sad because ever everyone deserves more than that. I'm sorry. Like, go on dated and related. 
Daisy has the zoomies. Oh my god, she's going nuts over here. She's going fucking nuts. That's how I feel like in my also, brain. speaking of Florida, I don't know. Recently, if you guys haven't, Google it. The sharks in Florida. Oh my god. There was like I think thousands, right? Thousands of sharks in the uh, the Panhandle Hi. on the on the east side or the west side of Florida, like towards Tampa. And I'm not gonna lie, like I don't know if it's just because I'm Egyptian and trans and I can't swim, but I wouldn't be in the water to begin with. Stas has only gone in the ocean. I think since I've known you, I'm not gonna lie. I've seen like three, like three times maybe. Once in Cabo recently, but it was a quickie. From a once in Hawaii, and I couldn't name the other one. Yeah, no, no, the <laughs> just sharks, two times. The sharks are out for the dolls. I feel personally targeted because I honestly don't even like the water to begin with. My biggest fear is like either getting like bit or sh like stab or like something that I can't control. No, no. Like when you're in the water and your leg's gone, it's like what do. And everyone says you can't feel it. Well, I'm worried about the humidity of my hair. Of your hair. Because even and, with one leg, you'd still go get a blowout. With, with, with everything else, the injuries, like, that hurts the most in my heart. Having shitty hair. Having shitty hair hurts more. Yeah, I agree. More than that goddamn ponytail. Because I know Stoss needs, like, four Advil right now. It hurts so bad. It hurts <laughs> so fucking bad. No, that's crazy. Everybody said that it's um the start of the apocalypse. And I'm not it gonna gives lie. that though like all these sharks in six foot water like that's really weird Maybe this is just because I'm, I'm an introvert. I think about, about the apocaly apocalypse like every single day and you probably get excited I'm not I mean I yeah kind of because <laughs> you want any excuse to lock that fucking door yeah, Well, I'm just saying like I always think what I would do in certain situations and like if you've ever seen zombie land I would be the guy with the twins. favorite movie ever I'm not kidding we might have to watch it tonight because that's literally one of my favorite movies You know they made a second one is it out yeah no. Yeah. Recent? Yeah. With Woody Harrelson? Uh, Is that his name? Yes. I don't, I honestly I'm don't gagged, I'm gagged, name. I'm gagged. With Where the, the fuck is Bad Teacher 2? That would that be That would, would be insane. <laughs> Miss Squirrel. Um, but speaking of Bad Teacher, I just know at this point with mine and Stoss's manifestation, we're probably going to take a shot with Cameron Diaz in the next three days. Okay, let's manifest it. I feel like Cameron Diaz drinks tequila blanco do you think she's like an on the rocks girl i feel like she's not a cocktail girl i feel like she's a shot girl she just i mean she's blonde like so quick like, yeah yeah she just seems like i, I just want to get in party and dip i change all my answers i think she's my dream guest on this fucking couch she'll like, be here she'll be here soon she'll be here also speaking of florida stash just made me against my will best thing she's ever done sit down and watch the anna nicole smith documentary you guys and oh if you don't God. know who Anna Nicole is, honestly, I'll let Stoss kind of like give you a breakdown. Anna Nicole Smith. I'm so sad she can never be. I know. I can't even talk about it. because <laughs> she, she can never be right. No, she would. And she would too. Anna Nicole Smith is like a blonde bombshell icon from the 90s, early 2000s, Y2K baddie. And, and when I hear 90s, you know, I like yawn and clock out. So I was like, oh, Stoss, like she's talked about her for four years. And I'm like, OK, Marilyn Monroe. Like I have the Playboy magazine of Anna Nicole Smith and it was $70 from the Beverly Hills fucking newsstand. I was so fucking pissed off, but I would do anything for my baby. Anna Nicole Smith is an icon, a legend. I live my life by, by her and she played a trans girl in a fucking movie, which I think is so iconic. Like the documentary, though, is one of the darkest things I've ever seen. Stoss will, like, we'll have these fantasies where we'll be like, let's watch something. But then, like, we'll hang out for a second. We'll do whatever. We'll, we'll go out five And then days five later. minutes later, it's like, oh, fuck, it's 7 p.m. Stoss, I have to go home because I have yeah. to go out tonight. Like, I just, you guys know me. I, I love going out. Priorities. I love being glam. Stoss stays in, which last night I got kind of sad that I was, like, at something I wasn't having fun at and not just, like, on the couch with my best friend. But my hair was done. Stoss did my fucking hair. What am I supposed to do? Sit on a couch? No, I would do it's that. a networking thing. I'm trying to help her business. Yeah. Last I'm night, I whenever <laughs> I'm drunk, I take people's phones. And before myself, I go to Stassi Bell and Stassi Bell Beauty, then Lila Ability, then Lila. <laughs> you know. It's, you know, but this documentary is the fucking insane. Sauce. I feel like there's very minimal things that I actually sit and watch. The last two have been that and then the Dancing with the Devil thing, mm -hmm. which is about all the TikTok people like praising Satan. But I'm just a sucker. For a good I like, that one. you need to watch it. Yeah. You need to watch it. And I just watched this other podcast that had the mom. If y'all are not following the Idaho Four case, oh, that's a where the four day. like students from Idaho literally got murdered in the middle of the night. Like, I've been following it for two years, and I do not get the judicial system. 
Yeah. Whatever. At all. Because I'm like, how does it take two years to send someone to jail? There's I went, a whole trial and case and there's still they do the it investigation, overnight? Like, but actually they did knock down the original house because it was sitting there in... Um, I don't know why they did that, though. I feel like there was so called? much more what's evidence. What's the town called? Um, it's not Budapest. It's like one of those... Uh, Ma- oh Moscow? Moscow, Idaho. Moscow, Idaho. They. If any of you are house. from Moscow, I'm not gonna lie, oh, man because I need more. That and like, why haven't chilly. the two surviving roommates spoken at all in two years? Like, how do you survive your four friends dying and not yeah. speak? Like, I know A they're massacre. getting they're it's, getting offered hundreds of thousands to speak. I'm sure, and they just yeah. Ugh, and it's crazy because even someone who experienced that, like, they're getting hate, and that is something. Well, going sanity. back to what I said. Someone's always going to fucking hate whether you like unfortunately serve or like go through the most traumatic thing ever, like, Somebody or just sneeze in public. Yeah. Someone's pissed. You someone's might as well just look bad. good during it. Look good. Feel good. Do your fucking thing. And baby laugh. Live that life, girl. Someone wants to like talk some shit about you. <laughs> <laughs> someone talks shit to me and sauce because we flew home from New Jersey on spirit. And it's like it was five hundred dollars. How the fuck else are you supposed to get from point A to point B? We first of all, I will be a spirit member every single day if it'll take me to my loved one. But I will never again because they charged us like nine hundred dollars for our suitcase. That was unfor- unforgivable to me. I'm not ever gonna like the howdy on the side of the plane. Like, sp- like no, I cannot ride this plane like a ball baby. Howdy is so. I will not be reverse cowgirling this no, goddamn spirit, bug. please. I'm not going to lie. Your customer service sucks so Howdy bad. Howdy is only meant for like when I'm going back to Iowa. Yeah. I don't want to get on another spirit plane. Well, I, I use Howdy like in other areas that Just I feel not, like are more important. not flying. No, I don't want to fly on Howdy. Howdy when I'm arriving to like a private jet terminal. Howdy when I'm in the bedroom. There we go. Hello. Okay. Howdy. <laughs> People will hate no matter if you're sneezing on a fucking airplane or yeah. going through the most traumatic part of your life. And that is just life, which is literally laughable. I'm like a tunnel vision kind of girl. I can only see what's in front of me. I can't see what's next to me or like the peripherals. I just try to look straight ahead like the sharks from Florida. Exactly. Sharks, sharks never go behind. Actually. I'm just, Stoss always tells me to take things one step at a time. One and thing I think at a time. that's on my goal. area of life right now. One step at a time. One step at a time. There's no need, need to, to rush. rush. It's like learning to fly. Come on, Jordan Sparks. Falling in but love. I also think that in life, I only have. Everyone was asking me my goals. <laughs> my goal what in are life. What goals? What are my goals? I think my goal is to literally do oh. one thing, whether it be filming this podcast, getting Starbucks, helping Stoss put on her self tanner, one Please. thing, and move on. That's my goal. And we're doing that right now. I mm-hmm. took my shot. I ate my Starbucks, contrary to popular belief. I had my fucking bagel this morning. And we're you. moving on. I think that I, it really is a one step at a time life, especially in LA and in whatever industry. Mm-hmm. Just do one thing. Be proud of yourself, you guys. And don't let anyone hate on you for trying your best. Because we're all humans that. and we all go through different shit. I love that. What's your goal? Um, I haven't thought that far. Honestly, that's why I keep saying one thing at a time because I'm not going to lie. Like, even when you go to, uh, like, AA and things like that, they say one day. You ever seen that scene from Wreck-It Ralph? Wreck-It Ralph where they're, like, in the villain circle? And they're like, I promise to take it one day at a time. Wreck-It Ralph Ralph is one of my favorite movies ever. I think your favorite movie was Tangled. Not Tangled. You love Tangled. My favorite movie is Ratatouille. Okay, that too. I'm I knew done. that. I knew I'm that. Done. But you love Tangled. Anyways, when you take things one thing at a time, when you just look at the objective in front of you, you actually find less stress and less cortisol in your body. Which you guys know a, lot, a couple episodes ago I was talking about cortisone levels. No, I will actually – Or co- cortisol. cortisol. One thing I, – I, cortisol is like your stress hormone and your adrenaline. Your body doesn't know whether it's stress or adrenaline, like pumped up or excited at the same time. So they're the same thing. And I actually found out the other day that when you wake up, you're supposed to have 30 grams of protein and then some sort – if you want to have caffeine or something like that – you can after the protein after the protein because the protein breaks down all the sugar and doesn't turn it into fucking cortisol and spikes your damn adrenaline 
Which is not you guys, good for I your have health. to start going to a nutritionist because literally, I swear to God, I wake up and eat my leftover like bulldog ramen and a scoop of peanut no. butter, and I call it a day. No, <laughs> no, that's gonna stress your body the fuck out, and I'm not about that. Like, my body's already stressed. I like to keep it cool, calm, and collected, honey. No, 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 no. One thousand percent agreed. No cortisol, just cunt. <laughs> Just serving cortisol cut. done, cut on. But yeah, thirty grams of protein a day, Baldivas. That's all I gotta. Say. Yeah, my I think my goal is just to experience. I don't want to see any more of it. I don't want to experience myself. I hate seeing the friendship breakups. Sometimes it's for the it better, sucks. but it's, it's so sad. It's like a movie without a sequel. It's like me and Stas have experienced them where's separately. Where's the original cast? I know. This and like, other friends that we know, like we've seen them have friendship breakups in the last few weeks, and I'm just like. I think really contrary to popular oh belief, I God. hate seeing anyone take anything, which again, I've done media. it. I've done it. I get it. You guys are going to be like, you always air out rappers. Shut up. But friendship breakups are so much more important than a rapper fucking you. Yeah. I think that someone being in your life, whether it's for six months, a year or eight years, that ending and ending up on social media for other people to judge on is just wrong. And it feels wrong and it just doesn't make me like happy. It's not how the friendship originated. It's not how the friendship should have ended in the first place. And I'm just like, that's not what social media is supposed to be. You guys can't call for. each other. Like you have each other's phone number. Yeah. Somebody I mean, asked me today for Stoss's phone number and she goes, I have three of them. And I'm, I'm like, screaming. damn, right? how many phone numbers does my best friend have? Kyla called me and she's like, what's Stoss's phone number? Stop. And I was like, Aww. 818 or 856. I'm not. Maybe 310. Like, I don't know. Wait, that would be crazy because then she would have my 609, probably my 856. And I think she had all. Prob <laughs> probably my other one. Okay. At the start of every year, Stas, somebody will like cough on Stas and she'll be like. New number, new, new email, new social, new passport. I do kind of want a new social. Yeah. Like, I don't want anything to connect to my old self. I don't know if that's how that works. Oh. But you know what? Probably something to do with taxes, which me and Stoss that would be have cute. been doing. Oh, no. I fucking <laughs> hate taxes. I literally yeah. thought they were optional for four years. Avoiding and now they, them like the plague. Now, the plague will never touch my ass. And I thought neither were taxes. No, you guys, listen. When business is booming, I love that. But then when you've got to, like, figure out your business and think past that, that's so I love up. working hard and being on my I bag, but then when my bag has to be like taxes, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this is not FDA approved and neither was my ass injection. Get out of my pockets. Which I'm not going to lie, I need more of. Get out of my pockets and just go straight for the pussy. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep it right <laughs> Definitely a pocket pussy, but I think we're getting to the end of this episode, you guys. Well, actually, this is random. Just speaking of pockets, um... Hailey Bieber has the pocket flushes. They're called pocket flush. Are they tiny? Yeah. Wait, I need that. She's so smart for that. I know. It's pocket pussy, pocket blush. Yeah, we love all the pockets in this world. Like, I don't know. So little things are automatically cuter. Agreed. You know what I mean? Agreed. It's like the Tamagotchis. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little, like a poly pocket, like a pocket whatever, a pocket whore, whatever. Poly pocket, pocket pussy, pocket blush. Yeah. Put all it, the same put it in thing. Your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God. I think as we always end every episode, Stas, what would be your main takeaway bell advice? I think my bell diva, my best advice bell of diva the summer, advice of the summer and life is to mind your business, stay in your own lane. That's so weird. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Love yourself and just treat others with kindness and never give a fuck. And never give up. Never give up. And if you're going to fuck, then just, you know, at least. Daisy is trying to go through my notes. At least go bitch. out with a bang. You know what I mean? Or definitely bang somebody. I think my advice yeah. of Lila give me 101 Ooh. summertime shine would definitely be to always try something new. Oh. Know that you are better off. The only person you have when you go to bed at the end of the day is not fucking Mary Beth from the club. It's not Joe Schmo that you've accidentally been fucking for a year and a half. Baby, it's yourself. Me, and I've had to learn the hard way for so many years and I'm just starting to get the hang of it. Do things for you. Do things for your health. And don't give up. And if somebody is in your life and is not supporting you in any way, whether it be financially or something you want to do, whether it's your sexuality, your job, or something you're pursuing... Bye.
bonjour, saranara, whatever the fuck people say these days, you're done. You're done, and that's bon okay. Voyage. It's okay to set boundaries. It's okay to be yourself. And it's okay to move on. Because yes. that's, what, that's what this episode is. It's moving on, clean slate. Everybody loves each other, and I think that's what we need to focus on from now on. It's also, just- for those of you hating motherfuckers from a couple episodes ago, from... Also, for those of you hating motherfuckers a couple episodes ago, I think I was nervous because Stoss was out of town and I was filming by myself. Whoever said I'm on meth is on meth. No. That's all I have to say. <laughs> no meth, babe. But you guys, I love you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Lila Ability. Me and Stoss will always be here yeah. every fucking week, month, and year. We're in the same corner every week, and we're going to keep it real as long as we possibly can. Yes. Always keep it real and keep it dilated, baby. That's Just right. as you should. I love you guys. This Make sure this hole is open, but this episode has come to a close. close. So. Just like our pussies, if we don't dilate for fucking two weeks. But if we you, guys you guys have not already, make sure you are following Lila Ability Pod on TikTok and Instagram. Mm-hmm. Me and Stoss on Instagram and TikTok. Obviously, link it down below as always. Mm-hmm. And make sure you guys stay true to yourselves always. I love you guys. Love and you make guys. sure you're subscribed. I love you guys. That's hot.